This video is going to show you all the steps you need to follow to be able to build a greenhouse with a splash pad. So you can pound in posts, or you can bury them, but regardless, the ends of the posts have to be clean. This simple um, three-wheel saw uh, cleans it up pretty good. Found that if you use a 48 millimeter sleeve, 14 gauge tube over a 40 millimeter, 14 gauge tube, it fits perfect. That way you can save money on swaging your ends. Uh, you need to go ahead and bend your hoops uh, or, or buy them pre-bent. Uh, the hoops, uh, two hoops per overall hoop, uh, you connect them with uh, bolts. Um, to build the trusses and to have them consistently sized, you need to build your trusses with at least the horizontal member. Uh, so you go ahead and put the brace clips. Uh, so the bottom of the brace clip is 99.5 inches from the bottom of the hoop that you're making. That will give you a, about a 7 foot clearance inside when you're completed. So just go ahead and use the standard screws. These happen to be uh, 8 millimeter, about 5 16 inch screws. Um, the typical greenhouse screws, galvanized steel, it's a soft. It, it actually uh, basically self um, locks. Uh, so be careful when you're assembling them because uh, otherwise it's kind of a challenge to get off. Sometimes you have to replace them. Um, by putting your trusses together like this, so the horizontal member is attached, you know when you install them, they're all going to be the same size, and you're going to end up tweaking them. Now, now these plates, these are top truss connector plates, and they have little tabs. You see those tabs on top. Uh, those tabs actually are going to bolt onto your uh, ridge beam. Uh, so you can either, either use a round or a square ridge beam. But either one is going to work just fine for what you're doing. So in this case, the uh, pre-drilling screws are used to hold it. And then um, uh, basically this 3 8 inch drill goes through to um, have a through hole that you can put uh, larger bolts, in this case 8 millimeter bolts, in place. So there's four of them uh, when you're complete with that. And it's probably overkill. You don't need that much, but you're uh, you know guaranteed you're going to be strong. Um, so, you know, once your um, posts are in the ground, you have the sleeve in place, uh, you can drop the hoops in. Just make sure you hear them click. So when you put your hoops into place, make sure that the hoops are in direct contact with the ground posts. That way they're not held up by the sleeves. Uh, it'll make sense once you actually go and install them. Uh, mounting the hoops, it's pretty simple, but... You know, and you could do it with one person, uh, but it, it, it's a lot easier. This is one of those things you actually probably I'd have two people for. It goes a lot quicker if you have two people. So these particular hoops, they're 1 9 16 exterior diameter, 40 millimeter. Um, they're plenty strong for this application. This is uh, just putting on the, the ridge for this. If you put on the ridge first, that's just easier to put on your purlins. The only way that we can um, do a, a polycarbonate greenhouse is by using purlins. We've done it other ways, but it just, man, it's a lot easier when you use purlins. It just goes on smoother. Keep in mind your end tr uh, hoop is not trussed because you're going to do, you know, vertical members on there. So you got to kind of pull it down before you put your purlins on to make sure it's all uh, even with all the other ones. Um, the first purlin goes four inches from the bottom of the hoop. After that, the next one's four foot separation. Then you have about three and a half feet. Then you have three feet. And then it's about two and a half um, to three feet for the other two. There's six total purlins. Now, this is a stainless steel L bracket. Uh, I, I use these just because it's cheap. But, uh, you know, we also have used uh, hat brackets and others for mounting purlins onto hoops. Uh, they go pretty quick. It's about 30 cents a connection by using these uh, L brackets. So, um, you know, if, if you match up your... Your purlin with where your posts are, sometimes there's variability uh, between, you know, center to center distances on your posts. So if you're just careful about marking them, put your screws in or your um, L brackets in um, based on where they are at the bottom, then as you go up and mount these, you, you could basically pull the hoops into place and make sure everything's straight. You do need a C bracket to connect your two, you know, purlins together in this case. Um, you can use uh, mending plates if you want to, but I, I found C brackets gives you a little bit more rigidity. Uh, I also find it handy if you put a screw on one end, and that way you can, uh, you know, set your purlin, um, if you're doing this by yourself, on one side and get get the other end of the C bracket and not have any problems. Um, 
and, and, and as I've stated, you know, many plates are fine. We've used many plates and, you know, scrap steel, whatever you need to um, connect two purlins together. But the C brackets are fairly cheap and work fairly well. Uh, so there's two L brackets per connection with the hoop. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the hoops are not perfectly set up. Uh, so you need to kind of pull them together. Here's an example we're using some vice clamps to pull it in. Uh, here's an example where the hoop, you know, it's off a little bit, but you can use straps to pull them over. Uh, you know, it's not too hard to do that. Combination of straps and C-clamps. So here's a couple of purlins at the top. You see, you know, at the top, um, just for snow load, you keep them at a two to three foot separation. Uh, in this case, this base kit is 34 and a half feet long. Uh, so you have to take off about three and a half feet of your purlins to be able to wrap things up. Um, I found it really easy when you do end walls, just drive in um, half inch galvanized tubes and uh, pipe into the ground. And that'll give you, it's really easy to set them. I have really rocky soil. So I just cut these uh, vertical um, end wall posts and set those right into the, um, the half inch galvanized tube. Goes on very cleanly and easily. Um, sometimes getting a screw on the bottom is a little bit of a challenge. You kind of got a pre drill, but it's pretty doable. So you can see you slipped it on the half inch pipe. Um, just kind of pound it in so you make sure it's level. Grab your level and, and, and check it. Um, and after you've done that and fastened that uh, vertical member to your hoop, go ahead and grab your uh, you know, vertical members uh, based on the center to center distance. Usually I use 42 inch center to centers. Um, so in this case, it'd be you know, 42 inches minus two times the width of your metal. In this case, it's uh, 40 millimeter steel. So um, two L, L brackets uh, used per joint. Uh, frame in your vent opening, however many vents you want. I have pretty good uh, wind in the direction here. But always make sure your vents you're putting in your openings about an eighth inch shorter. Now that's a C channel. Um, you can use C channel. They're designed to frame up your, your vents and stuff. But it leaves a bigger gap for air to blow through. So I find it easier just to use mending plates. And in this case, I just use some C channels and, and cut them down. Um, Harbor Freight has the best latches. I've bought lots of Amazon, things like that. But you can go into Harbor Freight for $1.99 and buy these uh, brass finish latches. There's aluminum and polycarbonate two-part butt joints. You need butt joints. I do not like H-channel at all. I recommend this butt joint. It comes as two pieces. This is the female piece. And you mount that right on your purlins, and you put the female portion underneath uh, a panel, uh, in this case the panel I'm standing on. And usually you have about a one-eighth inch gap between the panel and um, the tab on the female portion of your butt joint. And you just screw that in as shown. Uh, and then you lay your next panel right next to it and just pull it up so it's, you know, about an eighth inch away from the tab on that uh, female portion. Uh, and, and, you know, make sure it's all lined up. I use a spacer at the bottom just to make it a little easier to uh, fasten the panels. But you can, you know, move it around. You have to use 1.2 inch or 1.5 inch uh, neoprene and, and aluminum gasketed washers. Otherwise, uh, the polycarbonate manufacturer voids the warranty. So I use about, honestly, 40 to 50 per panel. Um, they go on pretty quick. Um, it, it's, it, you know, it's easy work. self drilling screws go really well into um, the steel. What you're supposed to do technically is pre-drill the polycarbonate three eighths inch holes, put a dab of neutral caulk in. But to be honest with you, most times I don't do it. Uh, if I'm doing a big project, I'll do it. But small, a small job like this, I'm, I won't mess with it. Uh, on the ridge, in this case, for this design, they do have ridge trim that you slide it in, but it's just easier to just bolt it in. Now this is the male part of the PC butt joint. So what you can do is get somebody inside the greenhouse and you on the outside, just use a rubber mantle it to kind of put it all the way in. It just snaps right in place. So back on top, so you have a, you know, you're, you're overlapping a little bit. You can screw it down without the uh, washers because um, you're going to have a ridge cap over the top. So it really doesn't matter if you squish it down. You don't have UV uh, degradation. So um, just what, what you do need to do is kind of squish that down, though, before you put the ridge on. Now, there's the ridge there. It's, it's pretty good quality material. Uh, and what I do is I take scrap and just put it on either side of the ridge beam to give me a little bit more meat. And that allows me to bolt it in. Um, holds it better if you do that. And I have scrap anyway. I'm going to throw it away. Use lots of caulking. I'll use like 10 tubes of caulking on a greenhouse this size. Uh, seal it up really good. You want an overlap between your uh, ridge 
Um, on the bottom, you noticed how rough originally those uh, ground posts were, but by using purlins, it really straightens it out. You, you, you might be kind of scared initially, oh, this looks awful, but the reality, by the time you're done with your ridge, um, with your um, your purlins, it'll be nice and straight. Now, the way this is done, you have a gap under there, and you're going to go ahead and backfill anyway, so don't worry about the gap. So after you've got all your hoop um, uh, polycarbon on, go ahead and trim off the ends. That'll get things ready to go so you can mount your next panel on your ends. Uh, basically the same format as what you did before. Just uh, you know, screw it in on all your vertical and horizontal members. Um, U-channel protects the channels. You need to protect the channel. So anywhere you have doors, vents, get some U-channel in there. Um, and one thing that I learned, lesson learned, unfortunately, you have to have the film on until you're done, but don't leave it on too long, otherwise it'll snap lap in the wind. When you're doing your trim, get some um, pieces of scrap in as spacers so you can uh, screw the trim into. It holds it a lot better, and you'll have lots of scrap metal for that. That way your trim can bolt right in, and it can be really secure when you're all done. Um, You'll be tempted to put the diagonals on before, you know, when you do the trussing. Just wait until you're done to put the dry diagonals on. Now, this is a splash pad just doing a test for the water. Uh, poured concrete over it. Um, wanted concrete grow beds in this. Uh, that way, and, and use the, the stainless steel sleeves uh, as the water ports inside the concrete, embedded into the concrete. Um, ended up using about six gallons of latex paint. Um, it's Autumn doing some painting, and then over that we put 16 gallons of epoxy, two-part epoxy paint. The objective here is how do you use your waste instead of dumping it in landfill? So we put it in the in these grow boxes, and then inoculated it with mushroom spores, so that this yard debris would actually create uh, mushrooms. Uh, wine caps the most prolific, but other ones are, you know, oyster. They have a few different oyster varieties. And you can see how fast it grows. This is after only six weeks. And take a look at how fast that mycelia has taken over. It grows very quickly in these conditions. Uh, here's, you know, January. Those are uh, strawberries growing. Very cold area. But all that water from the splash pad goes outside, so we put wood chips on the outside, too, to grow mushrooms. Now, if you could have a splash pad greenhouse, you might as well have a stand that has a solar water heater and slide. Uh, underneath there, uh, just some examples of some bags of uh, lion's mane mushrooms. Uh, here's an example, just doing a test, make sure everything works. Uh, Lizzie seems to really have fun with the splash pad. It's 80 degrees inside, 18 degrees outside. Uh, this is a two layer, eight millimeter. Uh, normally this kit has a four layer. Cost breakdown, the kit itself was 10,400. Concrete was 1950. Um, you know, all told, it's about the price of a cheap, um, you know, UTV. Uh, a lot more fun here. This is, based on my experience, you can support a human life with this size of a greenhouse exclusively. Uh, very efficient um, size, um, depending on how you grow things. Uh, the 2024 kit changes a little bit rather than L brackets. And, you know, we have hat brackets and mending plates and some bigger L brackets and some bigger, um, you know, top brass um, connectors as well.